Howdy, and welcome to a Beffy plugin showcase for the networking plugin Beffy Renet. Renet is a networking library written completely in Rust with a focus on server client games. It comes with features for sending messages larger than one packet through its block message system, features for authentication of connections, and even encryption if that's something that's important to you. And most importantly for me, it's incredibly easy to use and has a great Beffy plugin. Beffy Renet is the crate that wraps over the networking library with the great Beffy plugins. It automatically handles keeping the servers and clients running through their loops and exposes its interface through Bevy resources, and it's really well made and easy to use. The library offers two plugins, one for clients and one for surfers. Usually, you'll only want one added to the game at a time, and at startup you can decide if that instance is going to be a server or a client, either through the command line arguments or a completely separate Rust binary. The plugins are both super simple, and you can quickly understand them by just looking at their implementations. The server plugin depends on you having added a server resource, but if you haven't added one, then nothing crashes and it will just do nothing until one is added. And that's the same for the client, except it expects a client resource. This is great because it lets you delay adding the client resource until you're ready if you want to have the user punch in an IP address or something. The main interface the library offers is also these same resources. With them, you can read or send messages. The server also has an event it adds, which is only used to report clients completing their connection process or disconnecting. Finally, there are two examples for Beffy provided. We have the simple.rs example given in the Beffy Renet module, and the Git page has a more complete Beffy demo application. Both of these separate the client and the server in different ways and are pretty good examples for using the library, but I prefer the simple.rs example a bit more, I just find it more readable and clear. Overall, I'm very happy with how this library is structured on the Bevy side. Alright, now let's move on to an actual example of using this library. The most basic thing to do with any networking library is to send a ping between two applications. To do this, I'm going to go with a two binary approach, one for the server and one for the client. First, I set up my cargo toml with a dependency on Bevy, my fast compile settings, SERTI so we can serialize and deserialize traits, bin code so we can serialize down to a byte array, local IP address so we can get our machine's IP, public IP in Tokyo if you want to have a public server, and a dependency on Bevy Renet, and that's all we should need for now. I'm also going to set my default binary as the client just for ease of use. Now I'm going to create a bin folder and drop a client.rs and server.rs file in there, which Cargo will recognize as our binaries, and I'm going to create a lib.rs which will hold our shared data. In lib.rs, I'm going to pub use Bevy's prelude, Bevy renet, and renet's internals, so we can easily have them in our binaries. I'm also going to define our message enums. Our messages are going to be simple Rust enums, which will drive serialize and deserialize. The client message enum will hold everything clients can send, which for now is just a ping. And the server message enum will hold what our servers can send to clients, which is only the ping response, which I'll call pong. I'm also going to add a magic number here called protocol ID. We'll need this when we set up the connection between the client and the server. Basically, we should change this every time we want to update the game, and Renet will block any clients from connecting to servers expecting a different protocol. This is a nice built-in safety feature to catch weird bugs of the server being out of date compared to the client. Now let's move into the client binary. Here we just need our normal simple Bevy app, a Windows descriptor, and the default plugins. I'm also adding log settings just to keep the noise down in our printout. Now we can add the renet client plugin, and for testing purposes we'll instantly insert the renet client. Creating the actual renet client is best done in a separate function, so let's start writing that. To create a client, we need the current time, a socket, a client ID, a connection config, and the client authentication. So let's get the easy stuff out of the way. The current time we can get from systemtime.now.durationsense the Unix epic and then we can unwrap the result. The socket for the client can just be a UDP socket bound to 0.0.0.0 on port 0. I believe this lets the OS define the receiving socket on any open port on all IPv4 interfaces, but it's been a while since I had networking theory in college. Then, for a client ID, we need something that will be unique every time we run the game, so I'm going to use the current time as millis. You probably can have the player reuse their ID every time if you want to save this to a file, but for now, each run will have a unique ID. We'll create a default connection config object. This has many interesting settings, but the defaults work great for me so far. 
For the server address, I'm just going to use the local IP crate to get my machine's IP and then pick a port. In a real game, I would have the user prompted for the IP address before creating the client and then populate that here, after parsing the input. Now we need a client authentication. Renet offers secure and unsecure authentication. For demo's sake, I'll use unsecure, which needs the client ID, the protocol ID we made in lib.rs, the server address, and an optional bit of user data, which I'll set to none. The data here would be passed to the server connection event if you want to use it. Finally, we can create and return the Renet client, which will be added as a resource to our app. Upon adding this, the client plugin will start running and will go through the initial server connection process and begin receiving messages. That's our entire client app done for now. Next, onto the server app, where we need to do the exact same thing. We set up a Bevy app, and I'm going to use the minimal plugins here with the log plugin added. This prevents Bevy from spawning a window and should be a bit lighter. Unfortunately, this does mean the server will loop as fast as possible, with no vsync or any limiting mechanism. All the low power tricks and plugins I have found don't really help either, and it seems to just be an open hole in Bevy at the moment. My janky workaround is just to add a thread sleep system to give my CPU time to breathe, but for real servers, I think having a window is nice and giving some user-friendly admin buttons and monitoring support. We add the renet server plugin, and we again want to add the renet server resource, so let's create another function to build this. Here we need the current time, a server config, a connection config, and a socket. First, again, we need the current time, which will get the same way we did for the client. Next, we need a server address socket, which will be our public address. Here again, I'm going to use my local IP address in our port. If you want this to work outside your local network, then you need to set this to your public IP address and set up port forwarding on your router. This is a bit outside of my scope, but here's the lines that work for me after I port forward on my router. Arena issue is important to me here because it showed that you need the socket to be your local IP address, and then the server address is your public IP. If you set both to public, then nothing will work. We can create a server conf by passing in our max clients, the protocol, our address, and we'll specify that we want to use an unsecure connection. Once again, we'll use the default connection config. And finally, for the socket, I'll set it to the local IP address in the same port that we did for the client. Then I can bind this as a UDP socket. Now we can create the renet server and return it back to be added as a resource in our app. Now as a quick test to make sure everything is connected right, let's read the server events which should fire on every client connect and disconnect. When we run the server and then the client, we should see our connected message. If we close the client, then the server will eventually print out a disconnected message. By default, all the timeouts are set to about 15 seconds as far as I can tell. These connected and disconnected events are a great place to send initial client data, like the game world and other online players, and it's also a great place to broadcast to all other clients that someone new joined. Great, so we have a server and a client connecting, so let's send the ping message we defined in lib.rs. First, the client should send the ping, so let's create a system in the client called client ping. Here, we want the renet client as mutable, and the keyboard input so we can only send when we press the spacebar. If you are delaying adding the client resource, then you can use run criteria, which will let you test if the resource is added or if the connection is ready. You can also use optional resources in Bevy if run criteria don't work well for you. Now, when the spacebar is pressed, we'll create a ping message. I'm going to use bin code to serialize our enum into a vec of bytes. Then we can call client.send to ship these to the server. One extra thing we need is a channel ID. By default, we have three channels. One for reliable messages which we need the server to get, like pings and chat messages. One for unreliable messages which we'll use for things like player's current position, because it's okay if a few frames of that get dropped. And a final channel for block messages, which can be bigger than one packet. This is great for large things like world data or the player's inventory. Here, I want the ID of the reliable channel, so I'll just grab it from the default reliable channel config. I haven't really found a better way to get my hands on this ID number, but I trust the compiler to figure out this is a constant number. That should now be sending the messages, so let's go to the server and add a server ping system there. This system needs mutable access to the server resource, and we want to call server receive message, which needs the client ID and the channel ID. So let's loop over all the clients currently connected, get the reliable channel ID like we did before, and we use while wet to drain all of the messages from the server. For each message, we want to deserialize it into an instance of our client message enum, and then we'll match against the message. 
If it's a ping, which it will be, then we want to print out that we got the ping. Now we can do the same thing we did on the client side to send our Pong message. We serialize it in the bytes and call server.send message, which needs our client ID, the channel, and the message. The server also has broadcast functions to send a message to all clients and a broadcast except for sending to everyone except one client. Like if we receive a chat message, then we don't need to send that chat back to the person who wrote it. Now back in client ping, we can use another while let to receive all the new messages from the server. The code them as server messages and then match against them. If it's a Pong message, then we can print that we got the Pong. Upon running the server and the client, we can now press spacebar and see the ping and the Pong reaching the client and measure the response time. Let's quickly talk about scaling this up into a real game. This is going to get a bit opinionated and I'm not a networking expert, so take all of this with a grain of salt. We obviously need to consider all of the normal networked game problems, like cheating, rollback, and deciding if the client or the server is the authoritative source on any piece of data. I'm not going to go into any of that because there are smarter, better sources for that out there. Instead, I'm going to focus on structuring ReNet to be a bit more usable in large games. I've built a demo voxel game which I'll be covering in more detail in an upcoming devlog. But for now, it sends large chunks from the server to the client, and the client can move around and place or break blocks which will be saved on the server. Here, to handle the fact that we need to exhaust the messages from the server and the client, I created a single system that runs in its own stage before update that reads all of the messages across all of the channels and sorts them into a resource that any system can read. As the project grows, I expect to be more fine-grained with my sorting here, but for now I just collect them into a list. For my message enums, I've implemented a send function that takes the client or the server, and based on the message type, it sends the message on the correct channel. This makes it where I don't need to worry about the channels and they are all specified in one global place. Now to send a message, I just construct it and call .send. I also use an LZ4 library to compress my block messages, which took my chunks down from requiring 40 or so blocks to send down to only two, which is a great gain in my opinion. For client startup, I have a three state system, where first the player is dropped into a main menu state where they can punch in the server IP address and hit connect using a simple eGUI window. Then, while waiting on the connection, they are in a connecting state, which shows a countdown until the connection will fail. If it succeeds, then they are dropped into the game and they request all their nearby chunks from the server. If it fails, then they are sent back to the main menu state. The server uses the ReNet visualizer that ships with ReNet to show some basic network utilization info, and it has a button to shut down the server. There's more details to this voxel project, but I'll show those in a standalone video. Overall, I've been very happy with ReNet and it's super ergonomic and just works once you get things set up. There are a couple of small things like a ReNet error event that you should check, but I hope this showcase has been enough to get you started in experimenting with networked games using Bevy. I'm very excited to see what everyone comes up with, and feel free to join my Discord server and share any cool games you create. As always, thank you so much to my wonderful Patreons, and remember to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.